So this example is going to be a little bit more complicated, kind of bringing in several different things into one problem. And when you first read these more complicated problems, it can be a little overwhelming. So always take the time to read it and kind of sort out the information that's given and try to think about how it all fits together. And sometimes that means just starting the problem. And if you get a wrong unit or something doesn't look right, you can fix it later. But try something. Don't just sit there and stare at that blank piece of paper. So the first thing I want to do here is read through the problem and figure out what information I'm given. So we have a steel sphere which has a radius of 1.58 inches. That looks like that might be important. If this steel has a density of 7.88 grams per centimeter cubed, what is the mass of this steel sphere in grams and it tells us the volume of a sphere equals four-thirds pi r cubed. So we're actually pulling a little bit of, of geometry into this problem as well. And so on sometimes for problems it's easier to think backwards rather than to think forwards. And so what we're actually going to do is go to the end of this problem because we look at what is being asked for at the end of the problem. It says well we're asking for grams. Okay, That's what we know we want to end up with is units of grams. And when I look at the information given in the problem, what I see is that I have one thing that relates grams to anything else and that's the density here because it's in units of grams per centimeters cubed. So I know somehow that's going to help me get to grams, but that means that before I can get to grams, I'm going to have to have centimeters cubed. Now centimeters cubed is a type of a volume and so this is where the whole volume of a sphere comes in. I've got to know what that volume is and I've got to find it in terms of centimeters cubed. Now I can find the volume of the sphere Okay. I can use my formula here, 4 thirds pi r cubed. And so I, the only number I don't know in that is really that r, that radius. So if I have the radius in units of centimeters, so we're going to put centimeters here in parentheses, then I could find the volume in centimeters cubed. I could then use the density to get to grams. And so I need my radius in centimeters. And I'm given the radius in terms of inches. And so I can use my relationship between inches and centimeters. So one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. So I can get from radius in inches to radius in centimeters to a volume in centimeters cubed and then to grams. Now notice that I actually started at the end. I looked at what I was trying to finish the problem with because then I could work my way backwards. And sometimes that's an easier approach than figuring out where to start a problem. The other thing I did is I kind of made a plan and mapped it out. Notice that I'm not really using any numbers in here. I didn't put in what the actual radius was. I was worried about the units because if my units aren't correct, there's no way my answer is going to be correct. So now I've got my plan. Now I can actually go through and set up the problem. So the first thing I need to do is convert my radius from inches to centimeters. Now this is going to be a problem that we can't set up all in one fell, um, fell swoop and looking at one calculation at the end. We're going to have to do this in a couple of parts, primarily because of this volume issue here. We're trying to go from a distance to a volume and we have to use a formula there in the middle. So the first thing I'm going to worry about is kind of this step here. How do I get from inches to centimeters? Well, I'm given 1.58 eight inches and I know that one inch equals 2.54 centimeters and if I look at this I can see that inches cancels with inches so now what units I'll be left with after this stuff is centimeters so we have 1.58 times 2.54 and I end up with 4.013 centimeters. Now I'm keeping one extra sig fig here. I'm going to put a little line here under the one just to remind you that it's really the last sig fig I have. We tend to do that, um, carry an extra digit through just so we don't get any rounding issues at the end. So now we have our radius in units of centimeters. Now we can take that radius and put it into our volume formula here. And so I can say that I've got four thirds times pi times 4.013 centimeters and I need to cube that and now I can take and punct 
put that into my calculator. So I get 4 divided by 3 times pi. And most calculators have a pi button on them. You don't actually have to enter the, the numerical value of pi in there. And then I've got to take it times 4.013 to the third power. And what I end up with is 270. 0.7 centimeters cubed. And again, I'm going to put a little line there just reminding me I really can only keep three sig figs in that answer. So you should actually check, go through and do this calculation on your calculator to make sure you're getting the cube in there correctly. So now I have the volume in centimeters cubed and so that's the uh, conversion from the radius to the volume. Now what I need to do is actually take this volume in centimeters cubed. So I've got 270.7, my little line there to indicate that that's where my um, sig fig is, centimeters cubed and now I'm going to use my density because remember I'm trying to get to grams so I know I need centimeters cubed on the bottom that means I'm going to have 7.88 grams on top now my centimeters cubed will cancel now I can solve this and find that time the 270.7 times 7.88 equals 2133 grams. And then I'm going to write that with the correct number of significant figures. In order to do that, I'm also going to put it in scientific notation. And so that's going to give me an answer of 2.13 times 10 to the third grams.